Here's a video of me getting a shot of adrenaline. Oh boy! <laughs> adrenaline and focus are actually closely related and I used to think that if I wanted to have the best possible focus I just needed to get my stimulation as low as possible so no noise, no people, no clothing, no nothing. Until I read this book, Find Your Focus Zone, about 10 years ago. And by the end of the video, you will understand this graph and also how to notice your adrenaline level and how to change it for better focus. I was uncluttering my bookshelf and I found this old notebook from back in the days before I made digital notes. And back then I was studying my bachelor and my focus was just all over the place it was like a drunk monkey stung by a bee playing a pinball machine like i just couldn't get anything done and the graph that i drew in this notebook really changed my perspective on how focus works in fancy terms it's called the jürgen dodson's law but it just means that you will be more focused with more adrenaline unless you have too much adrenaline and then you will be unfocused again. So back in the days when I wrote this, I could only concentrate if there was a deadline because the adrenaline was really high and you need to understand that your focus zone depends on the activity that you want to do. Different activities have different focus levels. So maybe when you're mountain biking or doing any sports, you want to have your focus level or your adrenaline level at seven or eight. But if you would have the same adrenaline level when you are trying to write your thesis then it's way too high because then five is your focus zone so when you cannot focus it means that your adrenaline is not in the right zone for that activity an important question to keep asking yourself is do you need more or less stimulation to focus so let's first talk about being overstimulated, how to recognize it and also what you can do to change this. So when you're drinking too much coffee or you're anxious because you have to talk to your boss about a difficult situation, your heart is going to be pounding and your focus is going to be all over the place or really locked into one specific thing. And this is because of the fight or flight response that your body is in. So it feels like you are being chased by a group of unicorns because you called them horses, but actually you're just sitting at your office or you're sitting in a traffic jam and you can't go anywhere. So your body is really excited but it doesn't have anywhere to go. And you can recognize if you are in this fight mode, you will be overly critical, you want to argument with people or you're really cranky. While when you are in this flight mode, you are constantly ruminating, worrying, overthinking and trying to get out of the situation. And in this case, you want less stimulation. So there are many things you can do to get less stimulated. But I will give three examples. Lucy, the author of the book Find Your Focus Zone, talks about power breaks, which is you set, before you get off your chair or whatever you're doing, you set a certain period of time. So in this case, you just want to chill down a little, make some tea, maybe you wanna go for a walk or listen to some nice music. And when you find it difficult to get back to your work after this break, you can build a Hemingway bridge, which is a tactic used by Hemingway. He always used to stop at the point when he knew the next part of what he was going to write. So that way, when he got back to his work, he could already easily get into this flow because he knew what he wanted to write. So if you find it difficult to get back on your job after a short break, before you take this break, just write down what you are about to do. And this also relates to the second point that I want to talk about, which is journaling, especially when just writing with a pen. This will really slow down your thoughts. I notice personally when I'm typing, I can still type really fast, but if I just write down on paper, there's just a certain speed at which I can write stuff down. So automatically my thoughts just slow down. And what you want to do when you're journaling in this case is to write a short plan. Because we hate this feeling of walking into a fog and not knowing where to go. So just write down a very simple one, two, three step small plan. And having these steps will make your mind less anxious and get you 
back in your focus zone. And the third thing I want to talk about when decreasing your level of stimulation is what the author calls four corner breathing. So the goal of this four corner breathing is that you want to get your attention out of out of yourself like not directed at you but somewhere else so you're going to look at maybe the four corners of your screen or the four corners of your room and it will also calm you down because you're focusing on your breath and what you want to do here i changed this technique a little bit you want to focus on the first corner just slowly inhale then move to the second corner slowly exhale then you go to the third corner, you slowly inhale, you go to the fourth corner, you slowly exhale and you just keep doing this until you notice that your level of adrenaline or your level of stimulation is just going down. So remember the important question, do you need more or less stimulation for you to get into your focus zone? Let's talk about being understimulated, how to recognize it and also what you can do to change it. So maybe you're trying to do taxes or you're stuck at a birthday party of your uncle who's constantly talking about this unscratchable itch that he has. You're going to feel bored and unmotivated and the constant urge to check your phone or do something that is more stimulating. Whatever it takes to avoid this boring task. So. You can recognize it by feeling unmotivated, slow, bored, etc. But what can you do to change this? Actually, it's the same thing as being overstimulated. In this case, you can also take a power break. But now during this power break, you want to increase your stimulation. You could put some music on or maybe just dance a little, talk with someone just to get yourself out of this slow and lazy mode. So the power break works when you're over and also under stimulated. And the second thing is what the author calls savvy stimulation. So you want to be really savvy with how much you're going to stimulate yourself. I would like to call it microdosing coffee because in the book they talk about a research with 16 people. They gave them steady supply of short little amounts of caffeine and it was much better for their alertness than just getting a huge amount of caffeine in the morning like most of us do with a big cup of coffee and we all know what happens when you're drinking way too much coffee and your mind is like a pinball machine shooting all over the place or totally fixated on one point and also not really moving forward so do you need more or less stimulation for focus let's talk about the adrenaline score think of one to ten where one is the most relaxed you've ever felt, like after a massage. Where 10 is the most stressed you've ever been, like the 10 minutes you had before the deadline of handing in your thesis. So ask yourself, where are you right now on this score? Maybe you are five, maybe you are seven, maybe you are two. And then ask yourself, what score do I need to have for the thing that I need to do? And this could change. Five could be perfect for when you're working on your desk, but seven could be perfect when you're going to give a presentation. So if there are two things you're going to take away from this video, at least let it be the first question, what is your adrenaline score right now? And the second question, how do you add or decrease the stimulation that you need to get into this focus zone? I hope it was helpful. At least it was for me 10 years ago. And if you want to have a guided meditation about focus, check out this video. And remember to ask yourself, do you need more or less stimulation to get into your focus zone? Thanks for watching.